Eight o'clock. Let's call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. It's, it's noon. All right, noon o'clock. You're <laughs> already tomorrow. I'm already in tomorrow. Yes. Larson. Here. Black. Here. Blair. Here. Penny. Here. 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 All right. Approve. Uh, of the minutes for June 22nd, 2021 <coughs> regular meeting. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Call roll, please. Don't need that one. Don't need that one? Okay. Just, just Bills all, and communications. All, all in favor. All in favor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bills and communications. Approval of accounts payable July 20th. Questions? I'll move. I'll second. Anything else? All in favor? Roll call. Money. Oh, this Roll one's money? money? Oh, sorry. I'm wrong. Roll call? Yeah. Wow. Well, sorry. <laughs> we're going to go back and forth on this. Oh, we for. Need to get a little Things to hold up there. Yeah. Roll call. Flashcards. Larson. Yes. Blair. Yes. Blair. Yes. Green. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah, you're good now. Thank you. No problem. Review of accounts payable July 6th, 2021. Questions. All right, reports. Delinquency updates. We no have no delinquencies. You have been loving that, haven't you? We have no delinquencies, and yes, it's nice to have people who are paying, you know, with what we do and trying to fill in the gap. There may, of course, be sometimes some instances when people have difficulties, yep. particularly what we've gone through. But our businesses have done very well in, in working with us to make sure that we can replenish those revolving loan funds for other businesses as they need it. I agree. Thank you. Financial reports, June 2021. Thank you. Um, just a note on last months um, minutes under that sawgrass court I was supposed to come back to the board with a final assessment paving for those two lots there are no new uh, we they haven't been a change in the assessments because they haven't been done so they could be it won't be probably till September or October just so everybody's aware of that when we have a yep. final number um, I think they're just getting bids on it so <coughs> okay. yes so you're all aware of that um, the monthly reports, um, just some normal activity, collected rent, collected payments, and then there was a cash balance for each count that you also saw. So unless there's any specific questions, that was kind of routine, so. Any questions? Thank you, Carla. Thank you. Director's reports, June 2021. Uh, Fairly normal work month. Do you have any questions or uh, that you have? I do have one question. Were we able to get all of the um, COVID loans closed? Uh, the last one, the information is supposed to be coming in today or tomorrow. Okay. That's what we anticipate. Possibly Friday, something like that. But uh, they have promised to give us the paperwork to us. Great. Okay. That's, is that the last one then? That is the last one, yes. Good. Any other questions for Paul? Thank you. Second quarter MIF loan report. We provide this report to you quarterly so you have a, an idea of what's going on with the revolving loan funds. Um, when we go to the third quarter, remember it, there will also be a lot of COVID loans that will be included in there, so uh, reports like that will be longer next time. Questions on that? No? 
second quarter social media analytics. Uh, when I talked with Taylor Corbett from A2S, she pointed out that we are attracting more and more people looking at the page. Good. And she was quite pleased with the, what we're doing on that. So if you have any specific questions, I'll be glad to take them to Taylor. But uh, Oh, she's doing a heck of a good job. We try to coordinate. So, but yes, she makes it much easier than it would be otherwise. Are, are we finding out if we have people like outside of the yes. Eastern Forks area looking at? Do we know what she percentages gives me, we have? Uh, I thought it was in the report. It is, is there is under the note. reach. Yeah, and, and she gives the two or three highest people uh, uh, communities, but there are certain areas that. Uh, where the outreach has been more effective than others. But and with that, I was just going to say, are those is there any are those the areas that we want to be targeting, or do we need to be targeting other areas to attract businesses? I guess was kind of my. We haven't talked about there. that. Okay. But that, I mean, that's that's a good question. But we haven't talked about that. I was just curious, kind of where we would be going next step wise, because it does seem like we're kind of growing around the community. But are there other target areas, especially like looking at what? You know the capture committee had available to us between the joint uh, i'll talk with her next next month yeah just to see yeah and the nice thing even reaching our people to me it activity breeds activities right so it'll keep dominoing and we've been trying to do things that will attract interest like remember we asked you about your ice creams oh, yeah. posting about the ice cream that each of you liked mm -hmm. on there so that it becomes a personal touch. For two of you, Ben and Brian, we need to take your picture before you leave today, and then we need to get some of you that little bit of paragraph that, that I keep asking you for, <laughs> so we can post it so people yeah. can know a little bit about you. Okay? Oh, well, that ought to be interesting. Away. Everybody else went through that already. <laughs> I bet Josh hasn't done it yet. I'll oh no, Josh, Josh is part of the original group when we did this. All right. So every, everybody's done it. You two are missing in action so far. M-I-A. Well, numbers are going up without me on there. So. <laughs> uh, I will tell you, historically, the posts about the people on the board have been some of the best received and, and highest uh, response posts that we I was going to say, after that, your own Facebook page just goes right up to the oh, yeah. gosh. <laughs> just what I need. <laughs> Fan mail. Fan mail, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, unfinished business, non new business, 2050 land use plan. I've included the information from the land use plan. Every five years, the land use plan is updated here. Um, this, the plan this time is going to include a specific section on economic development. And what I've done in here is given you some background information. Uh, some of their survey information and other background information. Then I gave you information about what they are proposing for uh, goals and objectives. And they compared them to what has been done previously. But, and I also included our strategic plan because it, it, it's my thought that the two plans should be in alignment with each other. So my question to you is, as you read this, do you have thoughts or suggestions? Are they missing something? Are they right on? Do we need to adjust the strategic plan? Or does, do the, is the strategic plan already in alignment with what they're proposing? I also gave you additional comments from their surveys about different ideas. And then there's one other thing that I need to talk with you about after you, you think about those things. <coughs> If you want to take some time away from here and look at those and then send me back comments, I will submit them to the to the group that way, if that would be better for you. Okay. What's the difference in these two pages besides one has yellow on it? There are two sets of comments.
Oh, one has yellow because they were doing the. <laughs> uh, no, that's they were trying to make sure. They were trying to make sure that they showed you the yellow shows the difference from uh, 2045 to 2050. The one without the yellow is just uh, the full set of comments that they have. Okay. But I don't. There is no real difference in the content. Okay. Just the yellow. Okay. I had to refresh my memory. It's been a little while since I looked at it. Uh, <laughs> a specific question. It says on page whatever 37, it talks about how many acres are available in different areas. Mm -hmm. And it says industrial 123.17. We don't have any industrial area left, do we? Isn't it all sold? Um, well, that was the part I was going to get to next, but let's jump to there. It, it, the plan will show the acres that are shown industrial. They're not necessarily acres that are developed industrial or available for sale at this point, but they will show, show the total acres. Okay, because it says how many acres are available, mm -hmm. and you got it circled, they, and then you come down and it says available. I understand that. What they are is they are not, they are not built on, so when you add, I know of two parcels, for example, that when you sum the total of those two parcels comes to about 120 acres. There are acres also in the industrial park that while we do not own, they are still available, some of which are owned by uh, R.J. Zaverell, uh, and some are owned by uh, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Drucker. Okay. So there are some acreages that are available, but they aren't necessarily acreages that we own. The city has no industrial land per se, but there are, there are other people who own land that could be developed industrially, and what this does is show that, okay? Likewise, the commercial land, when you look at it, also reflects all land that would be planned for commercial as opposed to land that is open and uh, actually ready to develop as commercial. It's land that's, a, that's, that's uh, planned that way as opposed to land that is ready for development. Now, there is one other thing to look at when we look at that, I, and why I, why I wanted to bring it up separately, the yield for industrial land and for commercial land is about 10,000 square feet per acre. So when you look at that and multiply 10,000 square feet times that number of acres, it'll tell you about how many thousand square feet of industrial space and how many thousand square feet of commercial space that they anticipate uh, could be developed between now and 2050. For example, the industrial space at 123 uh, acres, 123 acres, would yield 1.2 million square feet of industrial space, if I did the mm -hmm. math right. Okay. The commercial space, when you look at it, at 110 acres, and the bottom one, land use projection is the one I'm working from. The land use projection shows 110 acres. That's 1.1 million square feet of commercial space. A mall is generally about 750,000 square feet, and I don't know what Columbia is, but in generally, a mall is about 750,000 square feet for most malls. <coughs> Uh, most of the indoor and closed malls. A super Walmart is, ranges from about 160,000 to 200,000. So what this is saying is that you might, they're, they're thinking much, as much space as over five super Walmarts. Do you think that's reasonable when we, when we see the changes that are occurring in the commercial market and we see the, the that we, when we know that in commercial development in general in this country we're highly overdeveloped as compared to other countries and that's part of the reason we see a lot of vacancies in commercial and commercial properties. So that was where I was heading to on the next question is do you think those are reasonable and these are based upon the lands that show up on the map how many acres there are <clears throat> but do you really think that these are reasonable and if so that's great and if not, then what do we suggest instead? And those are the hard questions. Yeah. It's a moving dartboard. Yeah. 
I understand. <clears throat> when you say reasonable, do you mean like is it reasonable about what's available, or is it reasonable for we expect what 1. we have? One million square feet. So, are, do we have too much land that's that's planned for commercial, Justin? For example, do we really think that we're going to see 1.1 million square feet? of a commercial space developed, if not, and, and then that's over the next 30, 30 years. years. Right. So if, if we think that's high, then we should be thinking in terms of how much commercial space we can absorb here uh, in East Grand Forks, and then backtrack that down, and this is how many acres we need, and that some of the acres that are show up as planned for commercial maybe should be planned for something else. <clears throat> That's the consequences of those decisions. Okay. Uh, do you have the map in here? Um, they have not given us the map. <coughs> and the reason for that is, yes, if I you agree. have commercial sitting in the middle of the <coughs> industrial, you're not going to change it to res residential. I, right. I agree, Ron. Right. We don't have the map yet. But it, the comment would be, we need to look at what we, at the direction we need to give to the people doing the land use plan. Are this seems high? Yes. We yeah, need so to look more seriously about whether this land should be planned for commercial or for some other uses. So if I read this right, Paul, they're looking at 36 acres a year. So what does that mean in square footage a year? Every 10 years. Every, every, 10, 10, years. every 10 years. Yeah, it's 10,000 square feet. So we multiply 10,000 times the number of acres you have, 33, and that's 330,000 square feet over 10 years. So just think, I mean, that's, so a that's bank like would a, be... A bank would be five thousand to right? seven thousand square feet, right? Or so. It'd be, it'd be a, oh, a Walmart, but the footprint would be bigger than that. I mean, with no, the parking and everything else. Seeing. No, uh -huh. no. So. I, you're you're mm -hmm. talking about just the building. I'm talking itself. about how much building there is. Okay. A building. Oh, the, what the net yield oh, on, a, the on a commercial right. property is roughly ten thousand square feet. Square feet of the forty-three thousand five hundred five hundred sixty thousand square feet okay. in an acre. So I just converted it back to how many square feet of building are we looking sure. at for this many acres? Okay. Yeah. How, what, what have we seen in the past 10 years? How many new commercial buildings have we seen in the last 10 years? None. Well, that's it. Very well, few. Yeah, we got one now. Well, they a took few, one down to replace it. Industrial, you've done a few. I, I was going to say it's more of a replacement in place, isn't it? Not really. Uh, and we have the not expansion. Really an expansion. We're correct. We have an expansion mm -hmm. for um, Northdale. And Mayo. Mayo would be industrial, right? Mayo. Mayo's industrial. Question for you. So, uh, like the Amazon oh, warehouse that was recently oh, built so. south of us down in the Fargo Moorhead area. Is that considered to be industrial or is that commercial? Because it's a warehouse distribution center, that would be probably considered industrial. Okay. But again, so I mean, I'm just curious because I mean, the trends that we're seeing is, is less retail space, but there is more of these distribution centers popping up. And I don't know if that's something that we need to consider in the land usage plan going forward is, is maybe leveraging that distribution center type stuff that we're seeing, um, you know, but just a thought. As a corollary to that, we also we're also seeing buildings where things are picked up, where they're converted from places that was retail space to places where you go in and pick up your retail, or it's brought out to you in the store. So some of the stores are doing it, and some of the parking lots are being part of the parking lots are being converted where you sit in, a, in a, your car while you wait for things to be brought out to you. Right. There are conversions. There are things that are changing that are going on, and. We need to be aware of that. What, what struck me when I looked at this is I was concerned about how many square feet are being proposed and that is that realistic? I don't really I, think, I don't think it is. And, and, and if it's not realistic, we have to look seriously at the map, as Ron pointed out, to see what territories are not really, are not really commercial territories. Right. So it's, it's some more work, but our comment back to the land use group will be, we think that the acreages are too high. Correct. We need to look seriously at what acreages are reasonable. Yeah. How does this align with our population growth trends, which I think are fairly flat, aren't they? Uh, very slow growth, a couple, one to two percentage yeah. points. So one to two percent here, and this looks like a lot more than one to two percent growth in space that we're saying that we need. It looks like an economic disaster to me. 
Well, the nice thing is this is in a plan as opposed to something that's going to be built and left be left empty. Right, correct. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's But you easy. want the plan to be realistic as but well. The plan should reflect something that's realistic for the next 30 years, yes. Mm -hmm. Right, and if that land can be used for something else that makes more sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think this is way too high, so. I think we need to look at more of the industrial possibilities that we have over the commercial. I mean, we're an agricultural community that we need to be looking at industrial land available to bring in things that support that community over the commercial space that we're looking at trying to fill or land we're trying to use for commercial because like we just said how much commercial space have we seen developed in the last 10 years not much and we've we've had commercial spaces sitting empty for how long and finally trying to get some tenants into those where um, you know the <clears throat> elevator type businesses and those types of things um, uh, um, fertilizer plants those types of things that are going to look at smaller communities like ours and get just outside of town in the industrial areas or whatnot are going to be a lot more um, I think beneficial for us over the commercial space. Kind of like an asphalt plant. Asphalt plant. You know, <laughs> if anybody ever wants to pull one of those in, good luck. I was going to bring up some, but I, <laughs> I will not. I, and, and I mean, in, in combination with that, though, too, is is maybe some of these commercial areas as well, if they're butted up against residential areas. I mean, we do have a lack of housing available, too, at a reasonable price for, like, you know, our teachers, for example. Um, you know, most of home ownership is difficult. Um, so we're not drawing in those people to support the community either. So, I mean, I think industrial is good too, but maybe looking at some of this for potential residential use too. Uh, I know there's some people that have talked in the community about home prices and things like that and making sure that we can attract some of these people that we were looking at through our studies, um, you know, from the cities maybe looking for a second home or maybe even first time home buyers coming up from an apartment bringing their kids up here so does that fall into the mixed use residential commercial piece because to, it, it, to have that blend it, it could <clears throat> but not necessarily <clears throat> a mixed use means that you'll have housing with some commercial or something like that, or industrial or something like that, that with it be the like the EDI like a, building over yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> could it be a gas station too Well, could be daycare as well. I mean, it, right? it, it, it mixed use just means that you're uh, taking one of the major, a couple of the major categories of land uses and putting them on the same property. They may not necessarily be in the same building, but they're on the same property. And there are whole theories of land use development that would call for major uh, uh, mixing of uses to make a, a neighborhood a complete neighborhood which is more akin to cities that were developed <clears throat> as walking cities 100 years ago uh, or 150 years ago before the automobile. Right. Well, that seems to be something, too, and moving on to the comments that, you know, there's a lot of people that are interested in this being something that's more walkable of a community. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, maybe that's something we need to start looking at. So, because, I mean, it's great to have all these industrial businesses, but we all know that there is a difficulty in getting, keeping, and retaining workers here. Right. Um, and, you know, making our community something that people want to be here for, maybe that would be a better use of the, the land. And I know people, our, our citizens really would love to see an outlet mall or, you know, replace the shop, go, all those kind of things. But as you look at what's going on in the... In the Economics, those just aren't happening. We were just down in the cities, and I mean, Albertville is sad. Well, but besides that, those are the same people that if you sat in front of their door, you'd see UPS and FedEx coming every day. Every day. But yet, we want a retail place. Well, yeah. So, the comments I'm hearing is that they're. I'm talking by experience, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can put a no truck on your street, no truck sign, so you can't get deliveries. We, well, okay. I, I did do that once, but. <laughs> or you can put it on your driveway. I did do that once. <laughs> <clears throat> Didn't really help, did it? Um, the comments that, I, that I'm hearing to take back is there's too much commercial land. Look seriously. 
at a realistic number? Yes. Look yeah. more at industrial opportunities? And okay. since this COVID stuff to kind of point out what you said too, when you read mm -hmm. about these people that, you know, left from areas like ours and went to the big corporate America world after COVID hit, that's it, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And that I want to walk to some place, I want to. You also have a lot of people too that I know for a fact, you got a lot of IT people out there that are working remote. They'll continue to work remote. Mm -hmm. no. They don't want they're, to go back. They're, And there are going to be business people that are going to be looking mm -hmm. for places where maybe they can rent a conference room for two hours to take care of business deals because they're primarily working out of their house. And that's... I mean, there, there is a change in, in how <clears throat> business is going to be done moving forward because it gives people that life-work balance. And I am just got the purchase order for a place that's going to do that. There right you go. Here that's going to turn it into exactly that. Mm -hmm. And I expect that we may see some structures here that do that too. I mean, there, there's some trends here, and there's a real opportunity to to kind of innovate what you know what has always been done. Yeah, it's a whole different way of thinking now. So innovation in post-COVID <coughs> spaces, correct? Uh, align with the population growth, and look at. How the, some of the land that's too much for commercial could be used for housing, possibly more moderately priced housing. I, yeah, I think we should pair it up issues. with a study of what we were looking at with people moving into the community and everything and what our target audience is, you know, to attract workers. What are people looking for? Right. I will take those things back, okay? And I will also tell them we want to look at the map. Yeah, that, that would be tell helpful. Them. Yeah, that would. <laughs> it's, not, so, it's not available yet. That's okay. Not that I recall. I don't recall it being available around here. Have you had but a yes. conversation with the realtors and what, you know, people are looking to buy? I mean, are they looking to buy? You know, the starter homes or, like, you know, you talk of people working at home, are they more in, uh, you know, the newer, more expensive homes? I mean, you the, know, what... The biggest gaps from the people who are involved in the housing market that I, the people I've talked to who are in the housing market, are for first-time buyers and for second-time buyers. As you move up, there's a lot of housing for people who have established families that are looking at their third home or something like that, but it's hard to find housing at the lower levels to enter the market. And the prices that we have on homes where people might be smaller homes or whatever are still very high in this area and it's difficult to enter the market because of the prices of the housing. That's supply and demand. Partially supply and demand, partially it's the cost. Uh, since we have to import so many things here instead of having <coughs> resources, uh -huh. uh, it, when you start importing things you have to pay for the cost of transporting them here as well and that is a high cost item as well. And, and even if you look at the trends and you exclude the last year and probably this year, I mean, it, this isn't anything new. Correct. So, I mean, I, I know there's, I've heard some people have said, well, it's just, it's because of COVID. I mean, this is not because of COVID. It's been trending this direction for a while. I'd say you can even track it back to the year of the flood when we lost all of those um, homes on the point. Absolutely. And you lost all the point, all the ones in Sherlock. Shot I mean, Park area. Yeah, I mean. I wasn't your, here, but yeah, well, yeah. Those are your <laughs> you can look at the graphs and you can see exactly what happened there. So yeah. I, well, it's I, hard I to think the other thing that we have to get used to over at least <clears throat> here is is that uh, mixed use. Yep. You know, you, you can't scream that I can't have a twin home next in my res, in my single family home residential neighborhood because that's where everything is going. It's mixed use everywhere. Yep. Um, in, in, in development in most cities, you know, so that's the, <clears throat> we have just some parochialism that we have to get past if we're going to do those things. And I think it, in For our sure. society, people, what they see as a entry-level home may not truthfully qualify as an entry-level home. I mean. Well, and to speak to Ron's point, we're going to go do a development in South Grand Forks starting in a week that 
there's a bunch of townhomes out there and there's a bunch of really nice homes out there too and they're all somewhat mixed together so it's the reality is to soften the guidelines may spur some growth you know but, and, and people consider townhomes to be starter homes at times but they're sometimes not. people consider those to be <laughs> retirement homes or yeah. a home that has less maintenance so that i can go hang out at the lake more often yeah because uh, i got a smaller yard <laughs> um you know i mean it, it's not what people think they are anymore there's quite a few people that, who i know have moved into those townhomes, you know, 10 years before they retire, mm -hmm. spend most of their time at lake homes and then yep. get rid of the townhome once they eventually retire. So, I mean, there is, it's not just starter home stuff too. Correct. Yeah. All right. Uh, 2022 budget requests. Real simple. Uh, the dollars except for personnel costs because those are involved with COLA and things like that. Our, for the capital budget, we have the an item for $10 million for developing an additional industrial land that's been in there. We haven't determined industrial spaces, uh, industrial uh, places to have the revenue to do that, but that will come in the future, but that's still in the, uh, ca in the capital improvement plan. With regard to EDA administration, um, dues and subscriptions I increased by 1000 and I took that $500 from general supplies and $500 to small tools and equipment to do that so there's no net change in, the, in that portion of the budget. Likewise in the 200 to the Excuse two me, go on. Um, are we over in that line item usually? Is that why you're yes. adding? Okay. I, uh, yes. <clears throat> And there are other things, the dues and subscriptions are increasing in price, mm -hmm. and and part of that's because they lost so many people, I think, during COVID, that they're making up for it, like, like happens, you know, they, they are expecting a certain amount of revenue, so they have to have it. Um, so I've just made it and take, taken a look where we might be able to pull back a little bit in other areas. Uh, in the 280 account, I made no changes, and the, I ask that if this is acceptable, we recommend to the City Council that they approve the budget as submitted from us. Move recommendation to the City Council. Second. As presented. All in favor? If Aye. Aye. Money. Money, we have to do a roll call. Hold it. Larson. Yes. Black. Yes. Blair. Yes. Gray. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. Thank you. Uh, new and refunded deed programs. The state legislature has uh, put together a series of programs, and I just included the information about them. There's a Main Street Economic Revitalization Program. There's Main Street COVID Relief Grant Program, Business Development Competitive Grants, Local Child Care Community Grant Program, <coughs> Emerging Entrepreneur Loan Program, State Small Business Credit Initiative, and Targeted Community Capital Project Grant Program. With regard to the child care, I'm participating after this meeting. I will be participating in a webinar on that program. Carla, were you also participating in that? Yes. So we're going to get the information. There are some grants available. We'll see if we can tap into that. And uh, we'll actually be talking with the city council next Tuesday night mm -hmm. to let them know I would it, like to file an application. If you go on to that website on there, I think there was might have maybe been a link on here too. Um, other communities in the area have done it. There was actually a Northwest Minnesota one back in 2015 and then yeah. Warren did one in 2019, Bemidji did one in 2020, Rosa did them. So they have tapped into those dollars. Um, and it also shows what the need is for our area, our city, um, for the, uh, Polk County, Marshall County. So like Alvarado's in it and Oslo, so. Will you bring that to the council meeting? Um, we'll bring those materials yeah. to the council meeting, yes. Yeah. Just enough so the council is aware <coughs> of the need and what has to be done and to get, get us the authorization to move forward. So is this something where the 
government is providing grants to individuals or people that want to open them up, or are we trying to <laughs> open up our own? No, not, not on the second one. Well, I'm just curious because that's not clear from any of that. I, yeah. yeah, I had the same question on what the goal behind these dollars were going to be. To help increase the quantity and supply of uh, child care spaces. And then do and we... it's being done by private, it's not being done by government, it's being done private sector is the way I read it. Okay. And then I, I guess on that too, is this the issue? Is, is there isn't enough capital money to get these types of programs or is, it, I mean, it's great to throw money at stuff. I'm not saying it isn't because, you know, that solves everything, but it really doesn't. There are people that want to do it. Uh, right. There are multiple issues. One of them is having capital okay. for the initial investment. One is having dollars for the operating costs and because uh, of the, what it does for pricing. And the third one that affects us is the regulatory climate between us and North Dakota for child care facilities. Right. And there we have, Minnesota has more regulations in place that, than North Dakota does. I'm amazed. I'm shocked. Right. Okay. Just I mean, shocked. I, I'm sure that's news to all of you. But th there's a combination of issues. I've heard some people propose different ways to try different models to try to reduce the some costs in a couple of those areas so that uh, you can reduce the cost of child care yeah. per, per child. But uh, it, it's an area that really needs a lot of work and out of the box thinking about how to provide quality <clears throat> child care. And child care is not the only kind of daycare that we need to be dealing with. Uh, we need to be thinking over the long run with adult daycare as well. Um, as, as we each get older, and we may need to have... Ron's place. already applied. That depends. Yeah. <laughs> You're to so stay clever. during the day when, when I our children have seen that are doing something. I, I mean, <laughs> and in fact, uh, and I don't think we'll ever get. Uh, well, Grand Forks has a couple of places that are get pet daycare as well. So there, there are a lot of different things. But for us dealing with the child care, we need to deal with those three issues and how can we address these? And this is only part of the issue. Bring them to work. Be part of this. Are, are these them funds work. available for proprietors to establish daycares, or is these funds also available for the individuals that can't afford it? No, it, it's oriented to the proprietors, Ron, okay. as opposed to uh, giving child care. You, what you see on the federal level are some child care tax credits that were that were increased to oh, try yeah. to make it more affordable. <laughs> yeah. You ask the question, I'm answering the question, <laughs> yep. to try to make it more affordable for people who need to use the services as well. And we'll find out more after we yes uh, and we're the learning webinar more. today, because the webinar today is on the applying forum. Yeah. Sure. So, and maybe now, they'll give us more information. Have we had any interest from an individual or a company that they would like to do more with daycare in, Grand, in East Grand Forks? No, I have not received any interest. I'm in, sure it's just like everything else there is, but where to get the people to run it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Question for you, though, on this, too, is, is since we are competing with North Dakota, like you said, because of the regulation requirements and stuff, is this something that we could do the border city tax credits to help somebody? Would, it, would those dollars I, be eligible to help them? If we get to that point, that's something I will ask about because okay. I do not know the answer for that. Okay. Because there are certain things we cannot use the that tax wants. credits for, and there's right. some things that we can. So if we got to that point, and if it makes a difference on the provider, then definitely that's a question to ask. Okay. But it's, uh, it's, it's just a curiosity point, thing. Anytime yeah. we're competing with North mm -hmm. Dakota for something, I, I like to know if we can mm -hmm. use those. It's just, possible, but I don't know. I know you point out the differences in the two states, but it, there's a shortage in Grand Forks, too. Exactly. So, yes, there is. So, I mean, it, it's... It doesn't Great to where. point that out, but I don't think people are knocking down the door in Grand Forks to open daycare right, either. But, so but, it's nice to be yep. get it equal, but but the it's difference a problem here is if we could pull it into this community here, yep. you have a bus system that could potentially drop your kids off. If you have to take your kids from go pick them up from school and then take them over, so then you can go finish sure. your work day. I mean, that's something that again attracting people to the community. That would be nice if a bus would actually be able to drop them off at a daycare center in town because I don't know too many Grand Forks buses, East Grand, or East Grand Forks buses that are going to go over to Grand Forks to drop kids at a daycare. 
Uber. So, yeah, there you go, Uber. <laughs> Innovation, right? Yeah. I'm just saying, though, that that, that that is one thing that, I mean, it could really, that can make a difference for people, especially with their work days. But I do agree, uh, there's a shortage everywhere. I'm not saying yeah, that there right. isn't. Yeah, I'm not trying to suggest there's no. not a shortage there either. Okay, just the Minnesota likes their funds spent in Minnesota, so yep. that's what we have to deal with. I, I like to maximize whatever we can do for the community, so. As the other one to note in here is the State Small Business Credit Initiative. That's an old program <coughs> that was refunded finally by the federal government. And we'll, their information on that will be coming out this fall. But it's a way to help small businesses get funding. Uh, it gets, and it's through the credit system. And I don't know all the details on it. Um, I don't think any, all of you have met Bob Isaacson that we've worked with on other things. Uh, he's at DEED. Uh, this will be one of the programs in his area, and I've already talked to Bob about that. So we can be able to have the information. But it's not out and available yet. That's all still to come. A lot of these programs receive funding, not from the state, but these are funds that came from the federal through the American Rescue Plan uh, Act. So everything is being put together on that, and it's, it, we will see a lot more. But at this point, there's not a lot of information on, on most of these things. Okay. okay. You want to talk any more about the daycare part, or we kind of are there any the other two? thoughts on daycare? <laughs> I just don't know how you parents do it nowadays. Oh no, I don't. I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have a wife that stays at home and actually homeschool my kids. Well, too, then so. to run them around to all these sports and jeepers. Well, that's a choice we made: is that my wife stayed home while we had children until they were to the point, and we knew that it cost revenue. But that was a choice we made because of the expenses and everything. Oof. But that's a choice that each family has to make on their own. And what do you do if you're a single parent? You don't have any choices. Buck up. Yeah. It's hard. It, it, you do. You walk up, but then you also have the days where you get call-ins at work, and mm -hmm. then you have a tenant. To, so then, you, again, you're having issues with workforce problems again. Yep. So, And it doesn't and, matter if they're single or married. It, it, and that's true, too. And then the other issue is have is if you have shift workers, how do you, those overnights, especially oh. if they're if it's single and there's no... Um, I don't disagree. Yeah, I, I mean, it's my people deal with that a lot. I bet you do. So. Thief River has tried to do some creative things that way, where they'll they actually pay the daycare directly if they'll take kids to stay the night. So, really, I know they've tried it because I yeah, yeah so. sure because you know because the DigiKey has all those different hours because of different oh, countries yeah. and time zones. <laughs> Basically, it's going to require, I think, a lot of out-of-the-box thinking and finding solutions and then adapting the legal system to allow solutions to occur. Don't let the law go with lawyers again. Well, and part of that might have been fixed a little bit if, if there's some jobs they can work at home. I know the plant is pretty difficult, but, you know, lots of DigiKey people are working at home, so maybe it's just the opposite. They're bringing their kids to daycare during the day so they can sleep, you know. But because uh, a lot of them are working at home still. Sure. But then there are companies that require that you can't have your children at home if you're working at home because they're to be, you know, at least my kids, I couldn't have left them alone in the living room. Well, I'm just thinking if they do the shift work and they're working nights and the kids are, you know, 11 to, you know, would it be seven fair, or something. Would it be fair to say that, you, that you're supportive of, of Carla and myself moving forward trying to get the grant stuff too? Yes, yeah, absolutely. We can, tell that to the ED, yeah. we can tell that to the city council next Absolutely. Week. And I think when we discussed this at um, the loan committee as well, we talked about making sure we reach out to the existing yeah. facilities and see, make sure that, and see what their needs are and, and make sure that we're not... Stepping on toes. Yep. And, and if they want to expand, we talked yeah. about, if they have mm -hmm. an interest to expand, how can we help them expand? Well, yeah. I think that's the biggest thing right there is, is you have to approach those people first because they're the ones that are in the business they know how to run the business they know if the profitability is there i mean let's be honest it's a sustainable business people are going to need daycare forever but you just don't see daycare facilities which must mean that it's not a very profitable business or it's very tough to run one um, there's got to be major hurdles in there otherwise 
a smart business person would go open one right now if the profit was there and I mean you're always going to have kids f full in those centers I mean Oof. I remember when when my first was born and looking for a facility they were all packed you were on lists and I mean that's the way it still is so obviously I mean I've never looked into what profitability is or you know how much money they can generate but there must be a major issue there otherwise you have people opening them I mean that's Insurance why insurance agency daycare on the side <laughs> yeah, <Come> on, right <laughs> <laughs> but I mean that's where that's where we do have to approach the people that are in the business and yeah. and maybe it's even if we do get the grants maybe it's approaching some of these um, existing ones the private ones in Grand Forks about opening up another location over here mm -hmm. if it's available because again like I said they're in the business they know how to run it already yeah. the other question would be too is is do we have the space available and what kind of modifications would have to be made I mean when you Excuse. talk about bringing stuff it, they <laughs> all, <know>. all questions <laughs> all, all questions to be looked at right Velcro, duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're on a uh, microphone. This is all. <laughs> Worst part is it's true. Um, I worked in another community that had a lot of flooding, river flooding uh, from a major storm, and many of the daycare operators went out of business because they don't have the margins to cover their capital costs. So when they weren't receiving any revenue from the parents, then they didn't have enough money to stay in business. So it, it, there's a, a real problem in terms of having enough revenue to sustain the business based upon that experience. I think now, that's what, real sobering. Right. Once you know more, Paul, it would be interesting to almost have a open house with some of our local providers, you know, centers, in-house. Let's kind of learn a little bit more because I, you know, we all know there's an issue, but until you talk to someone that does this for what a is the real issue? We're we're not hitting the, we're not really focusing on where where we can help with these dollars. And maybe maybe that is something that comes out of the council meeting next week too. Is well, that we need to sit down. When I went to that website and looked, that's I think this group that's doing this, that's kind of what they're getting at mm -hmm. yeah because it you know it's talked about how Warren had a group together and you know so I think that's part of the process is that you know, apply for this grant we'll help you get the community together to see what your needs are sure so hopefully that's what the webinar will be on today but that's on everyone I looked at that they talked about how they had community forums on mm -hmm. this and stuff so I think it's part of the process which is good so we won't be reinventing the wheel by having you know, a group like this that has experience doing that. Yeah, that'd be good. All right. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good day.